scripture reading now. It is from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, it's a story I told kids today about the, uh, the two builders. And this, again, is Jesus telling a parable at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. So he's done the whole Sermon on the Mount. This is his last illustration. It's very important. And so Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So in our word today. Well, here we are sitting on the very first day of the new year, and each of us here has been given 8,760 of them. Each one of us, you have been given it, the person sitting next to you has been given that many. Jack Prescott has been given 8,760, and so has Tony Romo, Pope, the richest among us, the billionaires given 8,760. And the poorest of the poor, the poorest refugee out there has been given the same amount. 8,760, and you have already used up 11 and a half of them. Hours, of course. Hours in this year. Each of us has been given 8,760 hours, and they are the building block of the year that we have ahead of us. And it is up to us, each of us, to decide what we are going to do with those hours, with this resource we have been given. What kind of a year are we going to build with these blocks of time that each of us has been given equally, the same amount to each and every one, and what kind of a year are we going to build with it? It is a building project. It's just like that. We have resources, and one other way that it's like it is that it can be dangerous. Building a new year, it's like a construction site. You've got to wear your hard hats because fallout happens, little collapses occur. It can be a dangerous place to be. So here we are beginning this new year with 8,760 hours, and it can be a dangerous thing to build a new year ahead. So let's think about that and consider it, and especially consider the dangers today as we look at this story from the Gospel of Matthew, the story of the two builders. What does it say about the dangers we might face in building this new year ahead? Well, as I said before, this comes at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Now, the Sermon on the Mount, I tell you, if you wanted to make one resolution as far as reading the Bible for the year, which I think we all should probably do, and if you haven't read it in a while, you should go and read the Sermon on the Mount, because what it is about is about being a good disciple of Jesus Christ, being a good Christian. And guess what? It's not easy. It is a hard thing. It is a challenging thing to be a Christian. It is something we have to work on. It uh, does not always come easily or naturally to us. And so Jesus gave this long, beautiful sermon about what it means to be a disciple, what it means to follow him. And then at the end of that long sermon, he gives the beautiful uh, words that I read just a moment ago. Uh, words about this parable about these two builders. The wise builder building his house on the rock, withstands great things, and the foolish builder who builds his house on the sand. The wise builder is the one who follows Jesus' instructions, Jesus' words, and the foolish builder is the one who does not. And there it is, our, our story for today. What dangers can we see there as we prepare to build our year ahead? Well, one danger that we can certainly face is, um, is that we let the past tie us down. The past, instead of, instead of being a good foundation for us, it, it keeps us from moving forward. And, you know, we, this can happen in all sorts of ways. It can be a uh, guilt that we have over something we have done in the past. It can be regret about something that we have done. It can even be sort of an overriding sense of nostalgia that keeps us from moving forward because we are so focused on the past. Now, for us, it could be all sorts of things. It might be a person who's no longer with us. 
And instead of the memory of that purpose, that person helping us to move forward in our lives, that memory of that person is doing what I know that person never would have wanted. It's keeping us back, holding us back from this future that we have ahead of us. Maybe it's a place, the place we wish we were, the place we wish we could be again, but we cannot be there. And because we are so focused on that past place, so focused on this idealized version of what used to be, we don't go to the trouble of making a place for ourselves here and now. Right? We're using so much of our time caught up on the past that we don't think about the present. We don't think about building what we could build now and in the future. Remember, <coughs> building is a future tense occupation. The builders here in the story of uh, the two builders, uh, they talk, uh, Jesus talked about the, uh, the one builder, uh, the wise builder building his house on the, on the stone, on the rock, and the foolish builder was building his house on the uh, sand, but actually what it says in the Greek is that the foolish builder, and they use this tense, continued to build his house on the, sta on the sand. It's something he had done in the past, something he was tied to. And so he continued to do it, continued to be weighted down by the past and not let himself build a house for the future. That was a past house. No wonder it was falling down. You know, the past can be such a great resource for us. We can learn so much. We can become better for the future uh, if we allow ourselves to look at the past in that way. Or the past can tie us down. They can swap down the building projects we do have for the future. Most of us remember the fact that uh, Cortez, the explorer from Spain, when he landed on the Americas, he was with a big, he had his big group of people, his army basically with him. He had, well, they had a bunch of ships and they unloaded all the ships and got all the men off and then they burned the ships. They burned the ships. That's a, amazing thing to think of is these men standing there from Europe, standing there on the shores of the, of, of the Americas, and watching those ships burn and know there's no way back. No way back unless they build new ships, unless their mission is successful, or unless somebody else takes another mission out. Get them. So this idea of, of December 31st, January 1st, being a day when we burn old ships, things that are tying us to the past, let me tell you, there are a lot of people who continue to try to make voyages and sail around in ships that have long been burned. How easy it is for us to stand at the shores of some great ocean of the past and look back longingly over those years or over those miles and just become preoccupied with it, tied to that past. And what do we do? We have our back to this amazing, undiscovered country that's behind us We've got, our, we've got our back to it, and it's all right there if we will just turn, let that past be a good foundation for us, and then move, move into the future. Remember, you think of the past. The past is a book that has been written. It is done. It has been published. You cannot change one letter of the past. When you think of the past, think of the past as a glass wall. You cannot get through it. You may be able to see through it, but you cannot get through it. The only doorway is the future. So as we think about building for this new year, let's make sure that we're letting our past be a good foundation for us, to help us into the future, to help us to be pointed toward this undiscovered country that we have before us so that we can build something wonderful. And when I say something wonderful, I mean something that brings glory to God. Something that helps us to become more the people that God wants us to be. So that we can have that real abundance in our lives. Not material abundance, the true spiritual abundance. But hey, if we're going to do that, we've got to avoid this danger. This danger of letting the past hold us back. And there's another danger too. Another reason we need our hard hats on this building project. And that's because we tend to settle for too little. We don't aim high enough in our lives, and especially in our relationship to God. There's always more that we can be doing, and we do tend to be satisfied with far too little. 
It's one question that never really gets answered in the story of the two builders, is why does this guy keep building his house on the sand? Yes, maybe it's the past tying him there, as we spoke of a moment ago. Maybe he got a really good deal on that land. For some reason, maybe it was family land, for some reason, he's settling for too little. And we don't know why in this story, and maybe that's good, because we're all different in this way. We all settle for too little for all sorts of different reasons. But here is God calling on us, especially as we stand in these 8,760 hours before us, calling on us to aim high as we build and prepare to build this great new year that we can have before us. Because after all, we're going to be building this year and at the end of 2017 when it's all used up and spent, we are going to be living in that house that we have been building all this last year. The house that we have been building. And let me tell you one irony of this story of the two builders. It takes just as much energy to build a house on a poor foundation as it does to build a house on a good foundation. So why not build that better house? Aim for something bigger, something greater, especially when it comes to our relationships with God. To aim for the highest and the best. I think... How do we do this? Well, the good news for us is it's all up to us. I mean, God's going to help us, but it really all depends on the choices that we are willing to make. What choices are we going to make for this year ahead? Are we going to choose to settle for the least that we can do, or are we going to reach for the highest and the best? You know, each day we wake up, we think that our day depends on other people. That our day is going to depend on the mood that our boss is in, the mood that our family is in. Uh, and yes, those are going to create the frames of our day. But we are going to paint the pictures. It's up to us to decide and to choose what colors we are going to use to paint that picture of our day. Are we going to use bright colors or are we going to use all grays and blacks? It's up to us. If we want to have this life, we have, to, we have to make sure that we don't fall into this one danger, great danger of building a, a new year, and that is settling for too little. Settling for too little. So let me challenge you then today. You have come here to this special worship service on this holiday. You've taken this time to listen here today. So don't let these words go floating off into the ether. Make some good choices about your year ahead. Decide what you want this year to be. Figure out ways that you can draw closer to God in these months to come using these hours that you have at your disposal. How can you live life more abundantly? How can you become the person God wants you to be? More of that person. How can you work on that? Make that decision and then get busy on it because I tell you Good things seldom happen on accident. We've got to work for it. We've got to plan for it. And that is what God wants for us here at the beginning of this year with 8,760 hours before us. These building blocks of our new year, they are, uh, uh, they're the building blocks, but there are also materials there that we're going to build our year out of. Maybe it's going to be some great challenge that we are facing today. Some unique challenges come our way and we weren't expecting it. Maybe it's a health concern. Maybe it's a job concern. Uh, maybe it's a family concern. But it has come to us today and that is going to be the building block. That is going to be the material that you build your year out of. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to make of that? In your relationships, in your life, are you going to become closer and closer to the people that are most important to you in this year ahead? Or are you going to continue in some of those relationships to drift just a little bit further away? That's the material that you're going to be building your life out of. Those are the kind of decisions you are going to make. So let's aim high. Here we stand at the beginning of this year. Let's do great things in these days and weeks and months to come. And let's make sure we avoid these traps, these dangers of hanging on to the past or settling too, for too little. It's a little bit, uh, I like to conclude with a, a little poem uh, that I like. And uh, I think it sums this all up pretty well. Isn't it strange that princes and kings and patterns that caper and sawdust rings and common people like you and me 
are builders for eternity. Each has been given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass, a book of rules, and each must make, ere life has flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Which will it be for you in this year to come? Let's bow in prayer. Loving God, we do give thanks that we stand at the beginning of a new year. And Lord, we do know that some of these challenges that we have before us, some we are thankful for, some we are looking forward to, and some, Lord, frankly, we are not. They're going to be hard challenges for us. But Lord, Lord no matter how, what form these challenges take, no matter, uh, no matter how we decide that we're going to uh, draw closer to you in these months to come, how we are going to become more the people that you call us to be, but then God, help us to be able to call on you to receive your strength and your help and help us to know, Lord, that there is always, always a hopeful story ahead of us, always good things in our future. And that's not, Lord, not because of us. That is because of you. And we give you thanks for it. But then God, we also give thanks that we have an opportunity here and now together around this table to break bread with one another. Loving God, bless us as we do this. Bless these elements of bread and cup. Lord, this, may this be a truly nutritious first meal for us in this year. May this, uh, may this fill our hearts and fill our spirits as we come together in communion, not only with you, but with one another. Loving God, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Well, 